here. What do you it's mean you have sword. no balls? Is there supposed to be balls in here? There's balls in your sack, dude. They're fine, dude. But they don't no, go away. There's no in here. Mm -hmm. What is those Chloe, in knock here? it off, dude. What are you talking there's about? No I don't need to see them. Do you know there's no balls in there's no the, the thingies? What thingies? The round yeah. thing. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the pleb. In today's story, unemployed journalist Rachel Gilmore comes after Pierre Polyev's wife. This week on X, Rachel Gilmore exposes Anita Polyev for following libs of TikTok and attacks her for being homophobic. As well, tonight, Justin Trudeau's comment section appears to be one giant fraud as it's being exposed that it's flooded with bots. And in our last story, Pierre Polyev finally comes out against woke gender ideology being taught in schools. You won't want to miss tonight's story. Stick around. Today's episode has been brought to you by Beaver Bitcoin, Canada's best Bitcoin exchange. Do you guys know what the best performing asset of all time is? It's not gold. It's not silver. It's not stocks. It's not 401ks. It's Bitcoin. If you guys want to get yourself some Bitcoin, head over to beaverbitcoin.com. The link's in the description below. Thank you for sponsoring this channel. Let's get to tonight's report. Welcome to your Wednesday report. We're going to kick off tonight's story with Rachel Gilmore, who... After being unemployed for many, many months now, no job in journalism, is still cosplaying as a journalist on Twitter, pretending that she's still part of the inner circle, that she's still relevant. In what can only be an act of boredom due to unemployment, Rachel Gilmore went and did an investigation this week. She decided to target Pierre Polyev's beautiful, smart, successful wife and go and do an audit on all the accounts that she's following on X. Yes, absolute psychopath behavior. Now, Rachel Gilmore started a thread of tweets here trying to basically expose Pierre Polyev's wife for following libs of TikTok on Twitter and trying to paint her as a homophobe or transphobic or whatever word she wants to come up with today. But as you can see from this tweet here, they're saying that Polyev's wife, or she's saying Polyev's wife, his top advisor and the guy behind his leadership social media strategy all follow the anti-LGBTQI plus hate account libs of TikTok. Now, thanks to Rachel's great investigative journalism, she got this screenshot here, publicly available, of the accounts that are following libs of TikTok. We, we see Anita Polyev, Pierre's wife, Dean Allison, Jenny Byrne, the mastermind behind Pierre Polyev, as well as Jeff Bellingall, the mastermind behind Canada Proud. Now, Rachel then comes out and says, I wouldn't normally care about political spouses' interests, but she's been actively campaigning alongside Polly Evan, expected to step up her fundraising role. That makes this kind of thing worth questioning. Now, after this absolutely Looney Tunes thread that Rachel Gilmore put out, the owner of Libs of TikTok, Chaya Raichik, came out and put out a statement about Rachel Gilmore's craziness saying Rachel Gilmore is the Taylor Lorenz of Canada this thread is unhinged oh you're just finding this out now Chaya after this Rachel comes out to her followers and reminds everyone here in case you missed it guys Pierre Polyev's wife follows libs of TikTok the account is effectively an anti-LGBTQ hate account full of disinformation isn't that account basically her just reposting things liberals post on TikTok in their own words? Okay. Hospitals and schools and posts about regularly get threats after the fact. Why does she follow this account? Now, what comes next is absolutely sweet because Pierre Polyev's wife, Anita Polyev, responds to Rachel Gilmore and just slaps back with the greatest reply ever. So I follow an account that a person finds outrageous. That person's Rachel Gilmore. This person seems to imply that it makes me outrageous. 
but this person also follows me. So then what does it imply about this person? I'm just trying to follow this person's logic. Okay, let me get this straight. So Rachel Gilmore's attacking Anita for following libs of TikTok for being transphobic and homophobic or whatever. All right. So now Rachel is following Anita, who she says Anita's you know, by default, transphobic and homophobic for following libs of TikTok. But now Rachel's following Anita. So what does that make Rachel? Rachel, are you a bigot? Are you a homophobe? Are you the transphobe? Isn't liberal logic just so stupid? And to make things even worse, libs of TikTok then comes out and tweets this year trashing the anti-hate network, which is an absolute joke, by the way. We pay them to combat hate. And they literally haven't said a word about any anti-Semitism going on around Canada. What a joke. Defund them. And according to Bernie Faber, the founder of Anti-Hate, he says that Anti-Hate only focuses on the extreme right. This is what it does. So yeah, so my tax dollars are funding this grifter organization to basically only attack conservatives. Why are they not focused on the far left? Are they not as equally dangerous? What a joke. But the good thing here in this tweet is Libs of TikTok said this about Pierre. Pierre Polyev is the extremely base dude who destroyed a journalist all while eating an apple in a viral video. They're very angry at Anna, and Anna Polyev follows us. So definitely don't follow her and help her increase her follower count. So yes, an absolute backfire from Rachel Gilmore, who's only making Anna Polyev more popular as she's gaining thousands of followers following those tweets from libs of TikTok. So yes, good job, Rachel Gilmore. You're actually helping out the Polyevs by trying to write a hit piece. It's kind of like the Liberal Party when they put out videos, attack ads that make Pierre Polyev look even better. Can the left do anything right? One thing I'll give kudos to Rachel Gilmore for is, man, for an unemployed journalist who doesn't have a job, who doesn't get paid money to do what she does, you sure do seem to get a lot of attention. So I'll give you kudos to that, Rachel. Your name is relevant, but your check ain't big. Rachel, if I could give you any advice, it's get back to work, okay? get Go back and find yourself a job. What you're doing now is not healthy. Being unemployed for months, you know, having all this free time on your hands, of course you're like sorting through people's followers lists. You have all the time in the world, and this is not healthy. It's, it's, it's mentally ill, honestly, stop doing that. Get yourself a job, get a routine back. And if you can't find a job, honestly, Rachel, I'll hire you, okay? I have the means, I'm doing well now. I got a sponsorship. You know what? I will hire you. If no one will hire you, I will hire you as an olive branch, as a as an I'm sorry. I will give you a job and I'll probably pay you better than Global News. So unblock me on Twitter and let me know. In our next story, do you guys remember when I was covering the fake Arrive Can reviews on my last video here? And I was exposing how fake the reviews for Arrive Can were and how the government tried to mislead Canadians into convincing them how great this app was. Well, the corruption and rot is so much deeper than you think. There appears to be a bot ring under Justin Trudeau's comment section. Now, a lot of my followers on X Twitter have been sending me in these screenshots and I just wanted to show you guys here all these comments underneath Justin Trudeau's um, pictures or posts. Yes, they keep writing this message here as, a, as an Canadian citizen. It's not even written properly. There's a spelling error right here. Um, I'm disgusted by all these comments towards Justin. In all my years as a Canadian citizen, I've never seen a prime minister better than Justin, and I think he's the best prime minister we've ever had. Back him and trust the process. We could still do this. Now, account after account are literally flooding his comment section with this. Now, I ask you guys, do you guys think this is coming from Canada? Or is this coming from India, Bangladesh, somewhere overseas where bot farms are usually hosted? Now, one of the key indicators here is clearly the broken English. I don't know about you guys. Let me know in the comments. But do you guys think that these bot comments are coming from Canada or they're anywhere near legit? I mean, other people are just commenting of all the times this has been reposted here. But look at all these accounts. 
that most of them have blue check marks. Um, as you can see, they just keep reposting this comment. So yes, on top of having fake arrive can reviews, we now have bots under Justin Trudeau's posts saying how great he is. Does it not feel like we are living in an absolute dystopia here in Canada? Seriously. And tell me, do you guys think that those comments are legit? Do you guys think those are bots? Where do you think they come from? Let me know in the comments down below, because to me, this doesn't look normal. So yes, Justin Trudeau is so sad that he's probably paying for bot comments because he's so unpopular in Canada. But do you guys want to know who is popular? That's Pierre Polyev, who is surging in every single poll, heading towards a majority government. But today, a clip emerged from Ile Eli Nantenkantel from True North, who showed Pierre Polyev finally breaking his silence on gender ideology and it being taught in schools. Now, we're going to play this clip here. And this is going to be a clip that is for sure going to make Rachel Gilmore release a, release a TikTok. It's just that good. The audio is a little low here, so I'll try to tell you guys what it says if you can't hear it. He just said there, for those who can't hear it, Justin Trudeau does not have a right to impose his radical gender ideology on our kids in schools listen to him here and say that again this is great does not have a right to impose his radical gender ideology on our kids and on our kids. <laughs> yes so yes pierre polyev sends two giant middle fingers straight to the far left saying yeah your woke ideology your woke gender ideology kids should not be learning that in schools kids should not be learning about pronouns kids should not be learning about multiple genders and getting them all confused it's honestly evil and pierre polyev's on the right side of history with us and you just love to see it and you know what of course rachel gilmore is going to release a tiktok and the woke media is going to attack pierre for this but you know what pierre if you're watching don't listen to them let them cry let them cry because this is a winning position most parents agree with you don't cave to these woke leftists never give them an inch never in our next story hot off the presses here just got this clip Pierre Polyev absolutely destroys Trudeau in every single debate he gets into him with. And today in the House of Commons was no exception, as Pierre Polyev and Justin Trudeau went at it in an epic manner. Let's watch the clip. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister only divides to distract. That's all he ever does when he gets into trouble. He divides people along every possible battle line. He did that with the carbon tax car vote for only some in a region where his support is plummeting and his caucus is revolting. And for 10 days, he refused to condemn the comments of his own Liberal minister who said this policy was applying based on how people voted. And now he signs on with the separatists to divide Canadians again. Will he instead of dividing Canadians reverse the policies that are driving them to the food bank? Here we go. You guys ready for unhinged Justin Trudeau? <laughs> Here, watch this. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. <laughs> ah. Mr. Speaker, we see the Conservatives' approach uh, to partisan politics and to personal attacks. The reality is, when we stood with the 80 to 90 percent of Canadians uh, who chose to get vaccinated, they called us divisive. When we chose... Chose to get vaccinated. Chose to get vaccinated. No, no. People lost their jobs, stupid. You said that people could no longer have their jobs if they didn't get vaccinated. They couldn't travel. They couldn't, you know, have a normal life. No, they didn't choose to get vaccinated. You forced them to get vaccinated, you gaslighting... Mm. Uh, who chose to get vaccinated, they called us divisive. When we chose you to are. stand uh, with uh, women across this country who want to control their own bodies, they called us divisive. When we stand with the 2 
What an absolute clown. Like, he's accusing Pierre Polyev of dividing the country when this is literally all he does. Dude, he's absolutely projecting. He's unhinged. He's not well. Trudeau is not well. But yes, Justin Trudeau's probably losing his mind because Justin Trudeau's losing in the polls, and it appears like he's losing his number one cheerleader, Susan Delacourt, at the Toronto Star, who's saying Justin Trudeau's a problem for his party. And even if he quits, it might not save the Liberals, polls suggest. So you guys are seeing the Toronto Star are literally flipping on the guy. But you know what? I bet in his delusional mind, Justin Trudeau really thinks he can win in the next election. Bless his heart. Let's go. Don't resign before the election. You need to face Pierre Polyev and get absolutely blown out. And by blowout, I mean, look at these latest numbers from the federal modeling from 338 here. The odds of a conservative majority is now at 94%. A conservative minority is at 6%. Okay, you guys see this? 94% and 6%. You know what that tells me? Is that the liberals have literally 0% chance of winning the next election. No wonder they are so unhinged. 0%. Yes, they're absolutely unhinged. And it's not just Justin Trudeau because one of his MPs this week, Ken McDonald, I believe his name is, went and gave conservatives the middle finger, the bird, in parliament this week. They're absolutely melting down now, and it's great to see. Let's watch the clip. So yes, this was right after the carbon tax vote this week for the carbon tax relief. This is what liberal MP thinks of Canadians. Watch this. Mr. McDonald, have a Look at his Mr. finger. And people like journalist Dale, you know, will go ahead and say that he was scratching his face. Does that look like face scratching or does that look like flipping the bird? Because if I'm trying to flip the bird here, this is how I'm doing it. Look at this. He's doing it low key, thinking we're too stupid to notice. <laughs> Mr. Yeah. So this is Ken McDonald. Ken McDonald. Really classy. Really classy. So yes, after giving Canadians the middle finger, because to me, that middle finger is to all Canadians when they voted against carbon tax relief. Well, there's a silver lining and a feel-good story here because Mr. McDonald is way behind conservatives by 8% in his riding and is most likely going to lose his seat as the next election. So what does this tell me? It says that we are going to see more and more childish and unhinged behavior from the liberals as we get closer to the next election. Who's going to melt down next? Let me know in the comments down below. In our next story, Tucker Carlson is coming to Calgary to do a show with Danielle Smith, and the left are absolutely losing their minds. Per Kian Bexty here, Tucker Carlson is expected to come to Calgary to do a show in the beginning of 2024. Now, the reaction from the left is just exactly what you expected it to be. Oh no, Tucker Carlson's coming to Canada! Um, in terms of Tucker Carlson, um, <laughs> listen, uh, that character uh, has um, attacked oh. the Ukraine. He has uh, diminished women in, a, in an offensive way. Uh. He has endorsed uh, the attempted uh, uprising uh, in the U.S. <laughs> around uh, the presidential uh. elections. Uh, he is not a credible figure. The fact that our premier believes it's appropriate to normalize the things this person would say by appearing on a stage with him, it demonstrates a profound lack of judgment on her part. It damages Alberta's reputation on an international level. Um, in terms of... Ah, uh, yes, the authoritarian left wanting to censor everything that they don't agree with. Such absolute clowns. And oh, no, how dare Tucker Carlson say anything bad about Vladimir Zelensky, who made the news this week begging for more money. Watch this clip. If you can't give us, can't give us some financial support, okay, okay, please. Give us a credit and we will give you back money. If you Oh my God. Does this guy not sound like your broke friend who's always trying to borrow money? I'll give you credit, man. Don't worry. I'm good for it. Trust me. And give us, can give us some financial support. Okay. Okay. Please give us a credit and we will give you back money.
And with a clip this hilarious, you know the internet was going to meme this. And as usual, the internet does not disappoint. Watch this remix. You can't give us, <laughs> can't give us some financial support. Okay, okay, please give us a credit. Give us credit. If give us you credit. can't give us, <laughs> can't give us some financial support. Okay, give us okay, credit. Please. Give, give us a credit. credit. All right. Well, that's going to be a wrap for today's show. Let me ask you guys a question, though, as we end off this video. What do you guys think of Rachel Gilmore? I want you guys to tell me in the comments down below what you think of Rachel Gilmore, because you know the best part is she's probably going to read them. So let Rachel Gilmore know what you think of her in the comments. And as usual, for those who have made it this far who are not subscribed, subscribe to my channel. Help me out. We're taking down Justin Trudeau. We're going to 100K. Help out the pleb. This was today's report. And I'll see you guys at the next one. Peace.